We, I think that's the other thing which I didn't really point out, I'm glad you brought that up, is that it's an international property mm -hmm. that's real time, that can be consumed on the live experience anywhere in the world, and also the VOD. I mean, this little company, 19, was able to convince Hulu to open up globally. So anywhere in the world, if you want to watch the episodes, it's the only thing around the world that you can physically go to. If you saw the message, you'd get, the screen would pop up and say, hey, why don't you check out If I Could Dream, but you can't watch anything else. Uh, oh, really? So you can watch just this show around the world? Interesting. Everywhere. Um, How'd you swing that? <laughs> you know, I think Hulu... I think Hulu... Is a, uh, they're a terrific company. Very smart. And, um, you know, they want to be smart about where they are in the world and how they move into those pro into those territories. They want to make make sure there's monetization, they want to make sure that there's enough content, mm -hmm. and I think we gave them a, a content package that came with the rights and clear, so right. they could actually put it out, and it gives them an opportunity to actually showcase the platform, the player, how much thought they put into things, so it, was, it really wasn't a difficult, wasn't a difficult sell at all, I think they were, you know, they were very They were receptive, like, oh, cool. Yeah. Hi. So, so we have this giant pipe at uh, at the house, and we that's a giant pipe to go out to the internet. But we also have a tremendously big pipe that goes from the house directly to this office, mm -hmm. which we have. Right? And what we do is, on a daily basis, we have a mirror of this up there, and it's essentially you know a very robust networked hard drive that um, stores, like I said, about 40 terabyte. And we met, you know, we basically do a call once a day. We delete whatever we don't need and then we call, obviously back it up there, but then we call it to here. Mm -hmm. And from here, we just basically push it out to the edit base. And the editors call footage, it gets dropped into their edit base, and they cut the show. And without that, I don't think we could physically even produce a show as quickly as we do it because you'd be running back and forth with tape. You then have to download the tape. You have to, you know, encode it into the right formats. All of this is happening basically on the fly, um, and that's actually what, from a post-production standpoint, I think is pretty revolutionary. Um, and the cameras themselves are basically all digital. You know, inside the camera is an encoder. Mm -hmm. it's just not an expensive camera, it's a security camera, but this camera's doing quite a, it's actually, what's happening is, the camera's doing one thing, which is taking the stream and taking the, taking what comes in and encoding it and giving us a portable file that we can take and obviously drop in here and then make a show. Then we take that same stream and feed it into the server and we actually do all the transcoding to get the, you know, the right size Mm -hmm. right size streams and then we push it out. So we take this fairly inexpensive security camera, we use it to do basically television grade production and also push a stream 20% to the internet. So there's a little bit of there's a little bit of lifting there that can happen. <laughs> and the companies that were really actively involved in helping with that are um, AEG Digital and um, guys have been, I think at some point we have to give them some real props because they have um, one guy in particular at AG, his name is Ben Rowling, he's, he's a live genius, he's been doing this for, he's like a pioneer of live streaming on the web, mm -hmm. does, he had his own company, that's when I originally found him, but they do quite a bit of, you know, they do the Grammys live, they do all these like industrial strength live events that have to be perfect all the time. Right. And so, you know, he's he was, you know, pretty much the quarterback for this and helped me source companies like Twin Technologies who did all, all of the code for this is much more custom. Like it's a custom build. So Yeah, I would think it would have to be. There's nothing off the shelf that does. Because it's you start with the source, the camera that we started with. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's no one using a camera like that in the way we were using it. Even the security company sent out their founder because they were just couldn't believe that we were taking the camera that they built for what, the, for what its purpose was and using it the way we were using it. So, so it's been a pretty good run. And how easy is it to pull together an episode each week? Is it sort of like, oh, we have all this wealth of footage, let's you know pick a theme and go for it? Or are there some weeks where it's kind of, you have to dig a little bit further? Are they doing crazy hijinks all the time in the house? Or? Let me show you. Um, so, we so this one person right here, mm -hmm. his responsibility is for taking notes. And he's got a note system, a digital note system. And he's basically taking notes for everything that happens in the house. And then they can use that, um, they can use that to, you know, isolate and pinpoint in the show, in, you know, in all of our footage, where is it? Mm -hmm. It's not perfect yet. Like, ideally, you know, we, we you know, our EDL, which is, um, um, you know, basically an edited list that just takes all the footage and gives you a really basic, um, list of everything that's important mm -hmm. is almost perfect. But once we get that, I mean, essentially you can dial right into it, the cameras you want, the angles you want, um, the room you want, the time you want, and you got it. And we're close. Um, that's, a, that's a fairly a sizable task to actually get that sorted correctly. Um, and then in here, they basically, they basically, if you notice, um, this is like the head of post, mm -hmm. and between what goes on the board is there, and then I think in here they have the same thing. You know, <coughs> we have story editors just like you would in television that are pretty much setting up acts for the week and who's going to be in them and what are the story arcs that we want to, you know, promote. And then, you know, pulling from, we obviously have cameras that are following most of the cast yeah. when they're outside the house, and we're pulling from that pretty much daily. Um, all of that gets dumped into the system as well. And, we, you know, I would say probably 75% of the show is, is made up of things that happen outside the house, mm -hmm. and 25% is what's in the house. Mm -hmm. so, Partially because a lot of the things related to the careers are happening outside the house. Right. Um, and, um, you know, the house has a lot of static shots. And uh, I think sometimes television really calls for moving angles and so forth. So from a creative standpoint and stuff, there's some reasons why there's, you know, more footage that happens outside of the house. Right. And we're mixing in the steady, the steady shots with, but it's still, you know, the static shots with XD cams and stuff. So. And, you know, we have basically one main editor and a lot of, you know, other editors and, you know, I guess, you know, assistant editors. And, and they, they pull together a show pretty much on the fly that, I mean, really doesn't get finished until about 5.30 in the morning on Monday. <laughs> so it's not, it's not, not great being an editor right now. <laughs> How big is the production staff in total? Guessing 20 people. I mean, that's post and production. Mm -hmm. So. And how does that compare to a typical broadcast or cable show? You know, I don't. I, it's difficult for me to answer that because I've, I I haven't worked on one. Mm -hmm. the, the guys who we have here have, um, and it's. I think it's considerably smaller mm -hmm. than, let's say, you know, a mainstream, large-scale television production staff. Um, Lean and, mean. lean and mean. Lean and mean, you know, it's the other things about the show that you wouldn't think are, um, you wouldn't think about is, imagine producing an episode and the cast being able to watch it, and they're still in the show. Yeah. Like, oftentimes <laughs> what happens is, you shoot all your footage, you send them home, you cut the episodes, they see it, they're pissed, there's nothing they can do. Right. They're happy. There's nothing they can do. Right. You know, this is a tricky, it's a little tricky to keep the cast motivated when they see things, when they don't want to be on camera, when they see things that they don't like in the episodes, when they, you know, 
these are human people, human beings. They have emotions yeah. and feelings and stuff. And <coughs> the way we're trying to actually produce this show, it be incredible, real time, unscripted. There's a lot of new challenges that we're learning about. You know, that kind of television, which um, I think is groundbreaking too, and interesting. You know, I mean, all the challenges that we've had on this property have been exciting, exhilarating, interesting. You know, you can see why people get up in the morning and come do this because it's not not your everyday TV show. Totally. Yeah. Awesome.